Quick snap. This quick snap, we're going to take a look at a game where we called midline triple 18 times. I'll talk more about why we were doing that. About the only other thing I want to cover quickly here in the intro is, is the idea that as a play caller, and especially for anyone who's a younger play caller, you got to trust your plays and your players. Uh, going back to the same play, when you're getting six yards per carry and, and you're getting a lot of seven or eight yard gains where you're one block away, you're one move away from that touchdown, you keep going back to it. The game's simple. Keep it simple. Let's check out some film. Midline triple is probably my favorite play within the Flexbone offense. Uh, quick diagram of the play concept. You're leaving the first defender on or outside the play set guard as the dive key for the quarterback. Um, and you're leaving the first defender on or outside the tackle as the pitch key for the quarterback. The, the quarterback's mindset on the play is I'm, I'm, I'm either given because that, that dive key sits and, and we got the fullback in the A gaps or I'm sitting and pitching getting the ball to the perimeter because we'll out leverage that five technique. The uh, other nice things about the play, you're, you're changing up the dive key pitch key, which changes up the, the fits for the defense. You know, the, 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 that defensive end, that five techniques not used to be in the pitch key when uh, they've been repping against inside veer all week. Other nice thing, the uh, counter or twirl motion out of the ultimately play side slot there creates a little bit of misdirection. Uh, often it will affect the safety and, and perimeter defenders with a little bit of a misdirection element. And it's, it's going to get end up uh, resulting in a lot of pitches to quickly get the ball to the perimeter to uh, the slots. Uh, real quick against the odd front there. Again, first defender on or outside the guard is the dive key. In this case, it's a three technique. You're gonna see uh, a lot of, of us actually leaving the two eye against the opponent we're playing. Um, and then the next defender uh, on or outside the tackle is the uh, pitch key. So dive key, pitch key, sit and pitch, uh, either give or sit and pitch, get leverage to the perimeter, get a crack block by the split end, get slot up on the corner. Little background going into this game. We're playing our, our rival in week nine of 2017. We're sitting at five and three. We need that six win to go to the playoffs. They are undefeated, eight and oh averaging 53 points per game. Um, so we knew we had to do a lot to keep up with a very high scoring offense um, uh, on, on the offensive side. Um, we did a great job controlling the ball and whatnot. Um, you see us running an inside beer here. As, as much as 26% of our offense ends up being midline triple and, and we run two midlines, uh, which, which kind of complement that. Um, we still ran other things uh, inside beer here. We're getting it pitched. Um, but we, we didn't go with inside veer as much um, because over the course of the game, and, and we even knew going into it, again, we got to keep up with 53 points per game. Um, and, and we want the ball in our best uh, players' hands, or at least our home run threats. And it ends up being number two here running the pitch, uh, Levi. Um, he's pretty fast and a real hard, mean runner. Uh, but inside Veer wasn't getting pitched as much over the course of the, of the night. And we were pretty sure of that going in. Um, my, my head coach, offensive coordinator, uh, you know, he, he, we need to find home run threats to keep up with the scoring. And, and as you see here on the 10 yard touchdown, inside Veer keep, real, real, real good inside Veer. We'll get to midline triple here real shortly. Um, over the course of the game, inside Veer only averages four yards per carry. And, and, and again, a lot of it was gives and keeps, uh, not, a, not a bunch of pitches. Midline triple kept getting pitched, and, and we kept having shots at home runs. First midline triple of the night, up to the sideline, and, and a, a quick nine yards. And this is not even really all that well blocked, which which illustrates the, the beauty of midline triple. Uh, point of attack. We don't block the two eye. All right, he takes the fullback. The DNs luckily step into the fullback. And the inside linebacker, who our, our guard should have outside released, we tell him take the easiest release. Well, that's a hard release. Great effort by him, but we don't get number 40 blocked. And, and then out on the perimeter, we don't get our corner, our, our slot up to that corner. If, if Levi gets up to that corner, we get Caleb for a bigger game. Second midline triple of the night. Going to the top of the screen. This is our, our biggest gain on midline triple. We're out to the edge. Big 20-yard gain. 
end zone shot. Still not blocked that much better. All right, dive key takes the dive. For whatever reason, her guard, her guard block the guy in your B-gap cylinder. Block the inside linebacker number 21, please. And, and our tackle can't short arc to him. But we are out on the edge. This one really illustrates the, the slight misdirection in midline triple. Number three at safety, rocking down hard. Headed in the wrong direction. You see number five right here. He actually ends up, our, our tackle gets a small piece of him. He is supposed to be crack blocked by the, by the split end. Well, he's so far inside because he's thinking, all right, play's going away. I got to be in cutback support. So we got two guys out on the corner. Corner completely misses. Outside linebacker does get back in pursuit, and same with the safety, but it's a big gain. Third midline triple of the night. Coming to the bottom of the screen. And now number five, that outside linebacker does a great job cutting it back in, and, and that eats up. Uh, both the block of our split end and our slot so we don't get anyone up to the corner of the safety and, and again the safety by the end of this thing you can see that's the big reason why, why things don't quite go there we go another fourth one of the night we're out on the edge and we just don't keep leverage here. You know, our, 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 our split end, uh, he, he's actually pitching in the Yankees minor league system. The name's Kelvin Starnes. And he had a little bit of a sore ankle coming into the game. Good hard run by Levi to finish that. We just don't get, get the thing leveraged. If we get a better seal, the slot doesn't have to waste time blocking the outside linebacker. He can be up on the, the corner. And we're on the sideline and up, up maybe for a touchdown. So we, we keep seeing the ball out on the edge. And again, again, midline triple goes for 6.6 .6 yards per carry. Here on the fifth one, we, we almost hit it. We are one step away from a big game, a big, big touchdown. A 45-yarder, 44-yarder, 45. Really well blocked up. Everybody's out in front. And you, you can see we just barely... There's one step out of bounds. Right there, uh, we get two. But we, we see that, and we, we know this is, you know, the, the offensive coordinator knows we should keep on going back to it. Six midline triple of the night. And pretty good defense. You know, we, we a combination of we don't get, get him sealed, he understands. Um, he understands as the force defender, I got to turn the ball back in. Pursuit's able to show up. Only a two-yard gain. And ball gets out there fast, but if it gets turned back in, it slows it down. Real nice job by our slot. We get good block by Robbie at split end. Not great, but his job is to crack the outside linebacker for whatever reason. Outside linebacker's way inside. We get him sealed. We're out on the perimeter. Good kick out by uh, Levi to get Caleb out in space. Nice little stutter move initially taking on the safety. And safety's a heck of an athlete. He keeps showing up here. Uh, there's no real answer on midline triple uh, to truly get to him outside of the, the tackle and guard in theory. The guard and tackle, they're both working by their rules. They're working up to that inside linebacker. In theory, they could be the bonus guy that gets the safety. But that safety is faster than our guard, so we, we, we're not getting there. So that's uh, the seventh midline triple of the night. Here we go, number eight. Quarterback gives it for some reason. Um, I think this is a case... That's Zach Goodline, a uh, real good basketball player at our school. Um, does, did a great job running the offense for three years for us. And uh, I, I think he just he thought this was inside veer or he, he just looked at the wrong, the wrong dive key for some reason. And we get three yards. It's kind of keeping the, the defense honest, but I think that's the case of a 16-year-old junior quarterback making a, a tiny mistake. Here we go, ninth, I believe, right? Ninth, midline triple coming up. And we 
was just the outside linebacker. That's great effort and not good ex- great effort by him, not good execution by us. Turns the ball back in. We pick up the first down. We get our four yards for the first down. But we're not getting the big gains like earlier in the game uh, halfway through this thing. And next play. Big gain coming here. Much better job by our split end uh, on this play. Seals number five in. Now, if he works higher, if he works with that, that outside foot, keeps working upfield and really pins him in, Caleb's one-on-one with the safety, and we got a shot at going. But because uh, number five is able to get back in pursuit, nice block by Levi. And then that's what midline triple to us. It's really, it's a perimeter play uh, unless you get the obvious give at the quarterback. And, and if we're one-on-one there with the safety instead of having the uh, cutback support from the outside linebacker, we're in a better spot. I believe this is the 10th midline triple of the game. And we just, we, we, we got a blocking, a blown assignment. Absolutely just blown assignment. Number four is not cracking the right guy. So we're one, it's just not a good play. And, and, and now it's just one of those things. As, as a play caller, every once in a while, you get into spots where you're like, man, why didn't that play go? Like, you start to not trust it quite as much. And it's also kudos to the defense, like, at some point. Right here, good defensive effort. Hard, hard gain two yards. And for some, uh, our, our slots, they're ultimately coached, hey, make sure you take care of a uh, tackle for loss guy, which would be that outside linebacker. So our, our slot, for whatever reason, not going wide and flat and getting up to the corner because um, we're not getting leverage on that guy. So I believe this is number uh, 12 coming up here. Fourth and four. These are back-to-back plays. We, we like midline triple on, on third and long, fourth and, fourth and long situations. Uh, with what that play looked like, quarterbacks probably checking us into it. He likes it. He trusts it. Especially likes it going to uh, this split end side. Get the ball pitched. And we got our seven yards for the first down. Nice job by our, our, our tackle outside releasing. Split end gets enough of the outside linebacker. And, and this is a really good job by our, our, our tackles, Matt Davis here. He, he should be in at the inside linebacker, but the inside linebacker keeps stepping up, ends up in the guard cylinder. Man, got too wide on his outside release. 13th, I believe, mid-triple of the night. Going to the right. And just now they're, they're playing fast. That corner pulls his trigger on like a crack replace pretty dang early. Really like twirl counter play a a twirl play action uh, pass is probably a touchdown at this point and and the other part of it is our our slot needs to be flatter and wider he's he's not trusting his teammate at split end because the split end hasn't been making blocks so uh, a first no gainer of the night I believe this is 14th midline triple we got some, but the safety, safety's not blocked. He's not accounted for really in the scheme. Good job by the safety coming downhill, making the tackle. Three yard gain. 15th midline triple. Now the court, quarterback tucks it, he sees this. End zone shot's going to show you what, what he's seeing. All right, for whatever reason, our guard's back to inside releasing. All right, 14 year old, 15 year old guard, real good player for us. Cole also over, played four years of varsity football, but inside releases, everything bites down on the fullback, both the two eye and the, the inside linebacker. And, and what really makes the play go, that defensive end, he's feathering trying to get out to the pitch. He, he's not re, he's he's not respecting the threat of a dive. So the quarterback sees it, tucks it, 
it's a nice little five-yard gain. So the head coach, offensive coordinator, is kind of thinking, man, if, if we get an insert blocker up there on midline, first midline of the night after, I believe we've had 15 midline triples, kind of lost count, and we don't quite get it to go because the backside pursued out of number 70. What well, should happen, and, and this was on the diagrams, both midline and midline triple ends up being blocked the same on the backside. The guard should be stepping and the center should be doubling that two eye back to that inside linebacker. Backside tackle should be uh, stepping and hinging, kicking out that, that guy. And the center just doesn't help on that double team. Guard doesn't get the help that he wants. Guard could work harder to get his hat on the other side, but he's expecting a center to fit there. And you're going to see number 70 slide off. And I mean, we get four yards. It's not a bad play. Oh, and we just miss it with the slot. So it, it's something, all right, maybe we'll come back to it. 16th midline triple, I believe. And we find nine yards in it. Just great play all around. Watch, watch the wall get set up by our guys. So their outside linebacker, their corner, fight their butts off to get out on the, uh, to set the edge. You got the wall of our guys. You got Ellie. Bottom line, Pursuit's able to get there because their uh, perimeter players force it back to the inside. Come back with another midline. Just not much, not much going. And, and the, the difference, the obvious difference between midline and midline triple is uh, now, now it's just double option. And, and this defensive end does a better job of all right, I'm going to actually play the block of the offensive tackle some, and he's staring in the backfield too. But he, he's going to make sure he respects the inside threat, causes the ball to spill out, and because we have the play side slot inserting, we don't get a block on the outside linebacker, so it goes for negative one. Um, by rule, our play side, our backside slot, he should be up on number five. He was looking for number five to fold in, so that's that's why midline double doesn't go there um and i've lost count because i thought this was uh, going to be the se the 18th i think this is the last midline triple of the game and they completely stone it uh, or worst looking one of the entire night the end zone shot you can see number 22 he's hey i'm probably getting cracked call out the crack be ready to replace talking to his corner our play side tackle, not outside releasing like the, the other tackle has been doing. So so we don't get 21 pinned in at, at inside linebacker. Outside linebacker beats the, the, the block of the split end. Inside linebacker is, is over top of the tackle. The defensive end is able to make help out. So they get three guys to the point of attack. And then on top of all that, number three is playing it smart at this point of the game. He, he's, he's not going so fast with the motion, and there's really no need for him to. Uh, from from a defensive standpoint, some flex bone coaches will be mad at this, but like you, you don't got to run downhill real fast as that, that middle safety. Just get your eyes to the next slot. Oh, he's coming back too. I mean, that, that next slot's the, the next biggest threat. And again, zero yard gain. Thanks for checking out this quick snap on Coaching Football with Brian Klee. Please follow me on Twitter at Coach Klee. Subscribe to the channel, Coaching Football with Brian Klee, by clicking down below. And if you have any further follow-up questions, email me at coachbrianklee at gmail.com.